In fact, I was... Uh, okay. okay. So, so uh, today our speaker is Yulia Nikolaevna Kuznetsova. And uh, what she will uh, say to us, no doubt it will be interesting, she will say now. So please, Yulia. Okay, thank you. In fact, I was trying to add uh, uh, a few more, uh, one, two more slides, but, uh, well, as you as you understand now, it's no more possible. And no, uh, I'm starting right now to share it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, oh, okay, working uh, for isolated functions. Yeah. So begin with the beginning. I don't know how to... Do, well, uh -huh. Oh, oh. So now I think you are seeing my file. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we see. Good day. Okay. Good okay. to see you all. Mm -hmm. And um, my talk is uh, concerning multipliers on the groups. I am perfectly aware that it is not the uh, specialization of most of you. So I will try to explain very... Yeah. Uh, Slowly. <laughs> that would be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, let us uh, recall, start from the very beginning. Uh, PDE is, uh, you know, there is a very important uh, Laplace operator uh, in Rn, which is given by the sum of uh, second derivatives by the coordinates. And it appears in uh, probably the most fundamental equations um, uh, describing physical, uh, certain physical uh, processes is heat equation, the propagation of heat, and the wave equation, uh, uh, which are connected, uh, which are concerned with the same operator, in fact, uh, but uh, it is first a second derivative which is <clears throat> expressed by it. So its um, resolution of these equations is extremely important in the uh, Euclidean space. And uh, since a long time already, it was extended to manifolds, to surfaces of different geometry, and in particular to the groups, which are the topic of, of my talk. Mm. Uh, now, uh, we are not uh, only speaking of the operator itself, but it, exactly for resolution of equations, it is useful to speak of functions of this operator. And uh, the most uh, maybe strict, the most straightforward way where everything goes uh, smoothly, it is to uh, formulate it as a <clears throat> positive self-adjoint operator on L2. Uh, and then uh, you can take uh, real value. Uh, you can take functions of operator defined on the real line because the spectrum is in the positive half line. Though it is not bounded, so the spectrum is not bounded uh, neither. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we can uh, define the absolute value of this operator. Well, it is not uh, uh, it is not the derivation. It is almost derivation because uh, well, the derivation is not a positive operator, but uh, we can express it in the Fourier transform uh, with the help of multiplication by the absolute value of xi. Then it becomes positive, and uh, in fact. Um, uh, even in Rn, this has sense because uh, the absolute value of a vector it is well defined in Rn. And uh, so we have this formula for absolute value of delta. And for any function, in fact, uh, so it is defined by a spectral theorem. All this is uh, for you, it's a language uh, very familiar. But uh, also in the Fourier transform, it becomes just multiplication by um, the function uh, which we want to apply of uh, xi squared. Mm -hmm. and because delta itself uh, acts as multiplication of uh, xi squared. OK. So as soon as this function psi is bounded, we get a bounded operator on L2. 
and there is no problem. And the problems begin when uh, we want to uh, consider it as an operator from LP to LQ with P or Q different from two or both. And it is a big theory which is very well studied, but where one cannot um, obtain final answers just because it is the nature of the question is such that it, it's not possible. Um, well, uh, uh, I would um, maybe recall once again which functions are most relevant for equations. For example, if we apply the exponential function e to minus t delta, then uh, we can take a function f, which is in some space lp, it would be our initial condition. And uh, uh, this operator applied at, uh, with the parameter t would give the solution at, a, at the time t. So we will be able to differentiate this function by t, oh, uh, sorry, we'll differentiate, yeah, differentiate this function by t. And uh, we will see that the derivative is exactly the uh, Laplace of u. Or, uh, so it's the solution of heat equation. Or if we take these uh, functions, uh, we'll uh, be able to solve the wave equations. Uh, cosine of square t square root of delta applies to the f such that u at the initial moment is equal to f, and sine divided over square root of delta applied to the initial value of derivative. Then uh, when we differentiate two, two times, we get exactly the solution of <coughs> of the heat equation, uh, uh, sorry, the wave equation. So these operators, they are called wave propagators, and they are the most important in this um, theory. So what is uh, the fact that if we obtain a boundedness of this operator from LP to LQ, it means that if we take the initial condition in LP, then the solution is in LQ, and we have a bound. <coughs> so that's more or less all about the motivation. And so um, what is known? Well, as uh, this uh, returns to multipliers, then uh, the most famous result, the multiplier theory, is the hermann michelin theorem, which says that if M is a function on Rn, such that a certain um, maximum, which includes um, a finite number of derivatives of M and uh, multiplication by polynomial functions, if this is finite, then uh, M is uh, a multiplier on LP for every P from one to infinity, between one and infinity. So uh, the degree of derivatives goes uh, up to s, which can be taken n over 2 plus 1. So it, you know that if your derivatives up to this point are good, then um, multiplication of m is uh, in LP, in a Fourier transform. Okay. Uh, there are results which are also valid even for p equal to 1. And uh, in our case, if you recall, our multiplication is by uh, psi of uh, absolute value of psi squared. So these uh, partial derivatives, they are all simple derivatives of psi times something which would depend on psi. Psi, uh, some coordinate divided over absolute value of psi and so on. So if... Uh, we have a result which says that if a certain number of derivatives is uh, decreasing rapidly enough so that we can multiply them by uh, polynomials of proper degree, then our uh, function can be applied to the Laplacian and uh, define an operator from LP to LP. Okay. <clears throat> uh, 
so in particular, this is valid for the exponential which solves the heat equation. It applies to uh, rational functions with a denominator big enough, but it doesn't apply to the uh, imaginary exponentials, which uh, are necessary for the wave equation, if you, if you remember, cosine and sine. Okay, now before um, going into more detail uh, of how to, what is known for these imaginary exponents, uh, we can look at the statement of the problem in the groups. So you can uh, imagine that we are working with the, the group of matrices. Yeah? The main examples anyway come from matrix algebra, uh, matrix groups, uh, like JN, SN, and so on and so on. Uh, the interest is mainly in the non-compact case. And uh, similarly to what happens in RN, if you have a basis of the Lie algebra, well, what is the algebra of the Lie group? Uh, it can be considered in several ways. Then, uh, for example, we can uh, regard them as uh, differential operators of the space of um, smooth functions on G, right? first order differential operators, uh, which act uh, like this as uh, derivatives. Uh, over the direction of uh, one parameter subgroups in G. Uh, if we write it in this form, then uh, if you look, I am uh, um, putting the, um, uh, the argument G on the right. And so it is clear that uh, if I um, take xf at the point gh, if I multiply again on the right by h, then uh, multiplying first and derivating next or vice versa, it, it would be the same result. So this operator is uh, right invariant. Uh, but then on the same time, uh, I could uh, uh, um, invert g and exponential in the argument. And in this case, the derivation operator would be left invariant. So in principle, the same vector in LE algebra can generate both uh, operators and it is up to, it's a question of choice how to regard them. Uh, in, uh, well, the operators can be composed, of course, so this makes, uh, uh, this creates an algebra of differential operators of greater uh, degrees, of greater order. And uh, we can get our Laplacian as a sum of squares. Uh, it uh, is in fact uh, not a unique choice. Like also in Rn, usually we take we take this one, the partial derivatives, uh, to define the Laplace operator. In principle, one could take others, but uh, we do not usually speak about them. Well, there are some facts, lots of facts which are valid for any. There are some which are valid only for this one, some change. Um, and in fact, um, uh, it is also the case uh, in general Lie groups, just as just um, there is often less um, uh, the canonical choice is not always obvious what to take as the basis. And uh, we will uh, go up, up to a certain point without thinking about what uh, are these x exactly. But at some point, you will see that we stop and see now we fix them like this. Mm. They are not always um, derivatives in local coordinates, but they are always uh, derivatives 
along one parameter subgroups, exponentials like uh, it is written here. For example, if we take a group simple enough, it is called ax plus b, which will appear later also. Um, it is a semi-direct product of R and Rn, well, not direct, semi-direct, with the following multiplication. So x is one-dimensional and y is n-dimensional. And uh, x acts by multiplication by an exponential on y. Uh, it uh, might seem a little bit artificial, though these are natural coordinates uh, for the group, but it is very natural if we look in the case n equal to 1, then it is just the group of matrices a, b, 0, 1, and uh, it corresponds to the affine uh, transformations of the real line a, x plus b, if you multiply this uh, by vectors of the type x1, uh, then the composition of matrices corresponds exactly to the to this rule as above. For n greater than 1, it is not as uh, convenient to work in this form, but still we keep the name. And for example, on this group, if we want to align the operators uh, up to R and Rn, respectively, uh, then the first one will be just derivation of, uh, over x, but the y's should be uh, multiplied by e to power x in order to be invariant under the action of this group. And so, for example, this would be an example of this subclass. Okay. Uh, now, uh, there are uh, results, theorems on uh, also how, uh, what estimates are available of these Laplacians in uh, depending on the group where we are. For example, if the group is of polynomial growth, so one good example is the Heisenberg group is uh, this one matrices of uh, the, this type. So anything like upper triangular matrices, it is a nilpotent group. Um, this means that so if we take subsequent commutators, then uh, at some point we end at a commutative group. So if we take something like this, then uh, the theory of uh, functions of Laplacians will be very similar to Rn. And there are uh, theorems of Harmada Mifflin type where uh, you say that if, the, if a certain number of derivatives is uh, bounded with good polynomial decrees, then the corresponding multiplier is bounded on AP. Just in this exponent which appears, it is not uh, directly the dimension of the group, but uh, it, it can be bigger. It takes into account several parameters, depending on the group. Okay. Uh, what is polynomial growth? They are all of polynomial growth. It means that there is a neighborhood of identity such that uh, the volume with respect to the Haar measure, the volume of u power n, it means the, the set of all products uh, of n elements uh, in u. The volume of u power n uh, grows polynomially with n. And it is true in Rn, of course, uh, it, the growth is exactly um, uh, r to n, where n is the dimension of the space and r is the diameter. And uh, on the um, Heisenberg group, for example, the growth is r to power 4, not 3, but 4, and so on. And um, a group 
uh, there is an alternative for Lie groups. Uh, it is not always of this kind, but it can be of exponential growth. Uh, in this case, uh, the volume grows as uh, n exponential in n. And uh, it is known that for discrete groups, there is a possibility of intermediate growth, but for connected Lie groups, it's not the case. There is nothing in between. So it cannot be more than exponential, for sure, but uh, in between, neither. So let us look then what happens on the uh, other side. Um, on the other side of exponential growth, we find, for example, semi-simple groups like uh, GLN, SLN, uh, groups, uh, well, uh, which are uh, somehow not, not commutative at all, <laughs> one can see. Uh, and there, it is known that if um, a function over Laplacian is a, an LP multiplier for P non equal to two, of course, then this function, which is uh, in principle defined only on the real line, on the positive half line, then it must have a holomorphic extension in a strip around the real line. Uh, it was uh, first obtained in 70s, as far as that. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, that the um, theory is very different from what we have on our end. There are much less multipliers. Uh, something like... Um, uh, if you Even if you have a good function, uh, but it is not everywhere positive. As soon as you take the absolute value of it, normally you lose the possibility to, to have a multiplier because it's uh, not holomorphic. It cannot be. Okay. And then um, uh, it's uh, often, often it is enough for applications, but still it, uh, it is very restricted. And the question is, okay, is it, is it all? Um, is it um, a criterion? So semi-simple group for exponential growth. Is it uh, linked to exponential growth, this restriction? And uh, it turns out that no. Uh, for example, the, mm, there are uh, already already the group which I have uh, shown here, a x plus b. It is of exponential growth because uh, well, it is exponential here, and if you calculate, in fact, the um, volume of uh, neighborhoods identity will grow exponentially with exactly for this parameter. And uh, uh, it is a very simple group, yeah? the simplest one. It has, um, uh, and it has, it is known that it has uh, also a theorem of uh, Hamada Michelin type. So it falls in the class of groups uh, of this uh, following kind. If we take a semi-simple G, like GN, and a maximal compact subgroup, like uh, like uh, orthogonal matrices in it, and we take a quotient, then we obtain something which is, uh, uh, say, uh, a typical example is upper triangular matrices. Then on this group, uh, we have multipliers bounded. Uh, or if, uh, uh, well, already as a certain finite number of derivatives is bounded, is decreasing rapidly. So it, uh, these groups fall into 
say, case similar to Euclidean one. Okay, if it is not growth, then what's this? So what is special about these groups? We can say that they are solvable. Well, whatever it means. Uh, anyway, maybe solvable is a criterion. And no, again, not. There is an example of a solvable group, which is similar to this, one can see, but where a Laplacian is, uh, admits only holomorphic functions on LP. So the question is indeed uh, very complicated. And uh, there are, there is a conjecture uh, formulated going back to Andrei Holonitsky, I think, who uh, thought that maybe the criterion is the symmetry of the Banach algebra L1 of G. Because all known examples correspond to uh, this L1 being symmetric or not. And uh, it might be that this is a criterion and it is not clear to what groups, uh, when it is symmetric and when it is not. Yeah, yeah but uh, it is an open problem. So here it is. And here it is what um, I wanted to say about functions in general. Now I would like to specialize it a little bit. Okay. And uh, recall, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, let us look again. So there is um, uh, this um, nilpotent case, which is uh, quite clear because it is Hamanda Michlin and in principle, everything is um, uh, straightforward enough. And this semi-simple case where everything is uh, holomorphic and also it is more or straightforward and both are unimodular, left and right are measured the same. But there is uh, this third class of soluble groups which are not important and which are like more or less like a x plus b but more complicated and which are not unimodular and where are two harm measures left and right they are very different and it makes that the operator can be very operators can be very different so again uh, what is the typical example it is a quotient of a semi-simple group over its maximal compact subgroup. Like all uh, invertible matrices quotient over by the autogonal matrices. And what remains is the upper triangle, which we can decompose further into the product of diagonal ones. We can arrange them to, to have positive entries on the diagonal. And uh, um, upper triangular with ones on a diagonal. And these AN are typical examples of um, uh, KAN, of what is called Ivasava decomposition of uh, any uh, semi simple Lie group. So when you uh, see the word Ivasava decomposition, KAN, so uh, typically it is this. Okay. And we are interested in the uh, groups of, uh, which are of the type AN, the product of A like this and N like this. So in this case, S would be the group of all uh, upper triangular matrices with a positive diagonal. So every such group is non-unimodular. And the factor linking the two harm measures is uh, um, the following. The modular function is uh, usually denoted by delta. And uh, it depends only on the A part. And it is the exponential of um, some linear functional applied to the logarithm of A. 
log so in certain way you well it is usually told like this but you can see also that it depends on the product in this form it would depend on the product of elements on the diagonal it's a question of parameterization this rule is uh, well if you have heard of uh, root systems then it is the half sum of the roots on a but uh, i Exactly, I wanted to insert a slide uh, speaking about this, but I didn't have the time. Uh, um, and I'm not sure that I would have the time in the talk. So in principle, I'm planned just to say that it's a special functional, which is uh, defined by the algebraic structure of, yeah. of the group. Okay, But it is, yeah. it is very special, it appears all the time. Yes, so do as it is convenient <laughs> to you. Yeah, yes. so, so here it is. So uh, we have this sum function and the modular function. So the um, anyway, the idea is that in natural coordinates, this modular function is exponential because uh, the distances depend not uh, on A, but rather on the logarithm on A. Uh, now, what is also special about A in groups that they have a canonical structure of a Riemannian manifold. So they have a positive matrix on the uh, tangent space, which is not always the case for Lie groups. Here we do have them. Uh, and uh, um, uh, it means that there is a connection, diversions, gradient, and it allows to define the Laplace Beltran operator and divergence of the gradient as on any Riemannian manifold. Okay. And if we choose a basis, um, well, rather concrete basis, but still, uh, uh, we want it to be aligned over uh, A and N. So in these operators, Xi, a part would uh, belong to the Lie algebra of A and another part to the Lie algebra of N. And this operator would be written as the sum of squares plus a linear term with the same rule as uh, above. And uh, it is uh, essential, it is not uh, a sum of squares. Okay, unless uh, we have really a degenerate case like uh, the group equal to Rn, uh, completely um, computed. Okay. By uh, tradition and all this structure, uh, these operator appearing here are left invariant, differential operators. But as I said before, I, in the beginning, I started by right invariant operators. And uh, this delta, which I was discussing, was with the right invariant. Uh, and it is exactly because uh, there is a connection between the two. So uh, translating right to left invariant uh, can be done, for example, by composing with the following uh, the change of variable uh, two of f would uh, be f of to uh, t minus one. If we uh, apply two, then x i tilde, then two, then we get an operator x i, which is also differential and uh, right invariant. Okay. And uh, let us uh, define a Laplacian delta, which is expressed by these uh, right invariant x i squared. Okay. And it happens that uh, this delta and this Laplace Beltrami are linked by uh, also another operation uh, of this formula where uh, the delta is composed with multiplication by the modular function to uh, again this change from t to t minus 1 
And this change, uh, this composition, leads us not to L, but L minus a constant. Again, with the norm of rho, it's the, still the same function. Um, well, why uh, I would say just because we, you verify that, and also because when you differentiate this modular function, then exactly uh, this linear term appears. So um, uh, this means that with one choice of basis in AN, we have this uh, link between geometric and algebraic Laplace, you can see. This delta is, in this case, usually called distinguished Laplace. And in the, from the same um, relation between them, we can derive that, well, from uh, other reasons, we know that they are uh, convolution operators, in fact. It is a general property. When you have a left invariant operator, it is a convolution on the right. If you have a right invariant operator, it is a convolution on the left. The question is just in which sense convolution, is it convolution with a function or distribution on, or not, but uh, in some sense it is always true. But uh, not only they are convolution operators, but uh, their kernels are very directly related. One is just the other one multiplied by the modular function. And it means that their analysis is often reduced to one another. It's a good point, but it doesn't mean that uh, they have a similar behavior. Uh, for example, uh, for Laplace Beltrami, it is known that, that there is a holomorphic condition. If your psi of L is bounded on LP with, oh, sorry, again, P not equal to two, but still. So then the function must be holomorphic around, uh, around the real line. And as I already said, for these A and groups, delta uh, is bounded in LP as soon as we have a decreased condition on S derivatives with a certain S depending on the group only. So indeed, uh, having an answer for one of these operator does not deliver an answer for, for the other one. But still, this connection does help, of course. And of these, the first one is much better studied because, uh, well, maybe because it was motivated by geometry and uh, there were more results, more attention attracted to it. Now, again, uh, as I said, there are um, uh, functions with propagator which are extremely important for the equations. And, uh, of course, as they are not decreasing at all, how much Michelin conditions cannot be applied to them. In fact, it is known that they are not often bounded on uh, LP from P equal, not equal to 2. I haven't found uh, who is the author of the first result, but with cosine, it just never happens uh, if p is not equal to two. And uh, for the sine, uh, p should be close enough to two. And in this precisely sense, one over p minus one half, should be less than uh, one over n minus one. So the greater is n, the closer it should be. By the way, um, the norm uh, of this sine operator uh, is bounded by a constant uh, times t. So the constant does depend on n, of course, but uh, the power of t doesn't. Now, if we cannot uh, apply these functions, then what we can do? 
uh, a solution is to localize them, as it is called. It means to multiply uh, by a function which is in C0 of R or even with compact support, and to apply these functions, which have more chances to, to give bounded operators. It is indeed the case. And for example, if you divide over a polynomial, then uh, for the degree of alpha of this polynomial big enough, uh, you get the boundedness on LP, it is still in Rn, uh, for any P. Okay. So uh, there is certain um, certain number depending on uh, N, which means that uh, alpha, the same alpha is, is good for any P. Uh, why does it help multiplying by polynomial? Uh, uh, well, I think, sorry, if I, no, I didn't write it down. Well, okay, uh, it helps because um, uh, it is equivalent, having these bounds is equivalent to saying that if your initial condition is not only in LP, but also a certain number of alpha, exactly alpha, number of polyn of derivatives is LP as well, then you conclude that the solution is uh, in LP or in LQ, mm -hmm. depending on the result. So it is uh, for PDE uh, mathematicians, it's estimating the solution in terms of the Sobolev norm of the initial condition. So it has uh, perfectly sense. It's not just manipulation. Uh, now, of course, in this kind of result, so with this, for example, uh, the interesting part is the behavior of solution when T changes. So depend, dependence on T. And uh, if we apply, for example, Hermann Michelin theorem, then uh, the maximum degree of the derivatives goes up to uh, n over 2 plus 1. And this would be the estimating T, which we would get. But in reality, it is known that the norms of these two operators on uh, LP over Rn are bounded rather by a better estimate. Uh, you see that um, it depends on both uh, N and P. And for P close to 2, it is much better than this one, as N over 2 plus 1. Of course, this means that these estimates were obtained by other methods. And this is uh, why um, working only groups would also rather look for more uh, specialized methods when um, working with oscillating functions like this and not just something very general, as yes, Hamada Michelin, even if it, if it is true. Uh, when looking for LP to LP bounds, usually the strategy is as follows. It is not done individually. The work is goes as follows. You are looking for the norm on L1, which is usually the complicated part. Then you recall that on L2, everything is very clear. The norm of operator is just a uniform norm of psi. And then on the intermediate LP, it, is go, it goes by an interpolation. So for, for the sequel, what we are interested in, it is L1 and sometimes an in, in infinity. Other Ps uh, are obtained automatically. Uh, if we uh, quit Rn, then uh, and uh, concentrate again on our uh, case that is uh, symmetric spaces, the AN groups. 
then there is a result. Um, well, there is something for sine function, but uh, I'm not citing everything, but still. Uh, for cosine and for Laplace Beltrami, uh, we have uh, the result for for this function, 1 plus x squared to power minus alpha e to i t x, which is bounded by this exponential in t, polynomial in t in r n. On a n groups in Laplace Beltrami, its norm grows exponentially. There is some integer parameter sigma here, which goes, which gives the real order of growth. So at once, it shows that the theory is very different. The geometry has changed. What is rank one? It means that the dimension of this a, which I was speaking about, is one. So for example, the ax plus b group falls into this class, but uh, the three-dimensional uh, upper trigonal matrices do not. They have rank three. Okay, so on this class, the theorem is like this. And uh, we will see now that uh, let us, there is no theorem uh, as general as this for uh, the delta, for the distinguished Laplacian. So this is for the Laplace Beltran. But for the simplest uh, case of AX plus B group, there is a result which says that the norm of cosine of uh, delta is bounded just by t. Uh, and uh, the uniform norm of the corresponding kernel is uh, bounded by a constant for any t. So you see once again that uh, the operators are very different. And by the way, they are very different from the Rn case as well. Because for example, from uh, the LP norm of uh, this cosine for p non equal to one can be calculated, estimated as one plus t to this power, which does not include n. So even when n is big, we still have the same polynomial uh, here in t. As compared to n, appearing and indeed appearing in Rn. Uh, at the same time, so uh, in this way, uh, the estimate is much better than in Rn. From the other side, the uniform norm is uh, in their result bounded by a constant. And it is known but that in Rn, uni uniform norm uh, 10 to 0 in t with a power which depends on n. And so e, there is a question whether uh, these groups in this respect behave really worse than um, Rn or it is just a problem of uh, estimates. Uh, we worked on it with my co-authors and uh, we obtained that both bounds are sharp. So indeed, uh, the norm of um, the L1 norm is bounded below by a constant times t. And the uniform norm is bounded below by a certain constant independent on uh, t. Okay. So there are these uh, surprises here. And uh, it was uh, the smallest, the simplest um, exponential group, uh, simplest group of uh, exponential growth, okay. non unimodular And of course, uh, wouldn't like to stop here. Would like to um, know what happens uh, in the wider cases. 
uh, for example, uh, mm -hmm. there is a generalization uh, to the following dummy creature spaces, which mm -hmm. are also a group of A n type, where A is a billion, N is nilpotent, uh, like we have seen before. But they are not coming from uh, semi-simple groups. They are constructed otherwise, um, artificially. They are not symmetric spaces in general. It means that, uh, well, geometrically, they are not the same. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, in all... Mm, they're not the same, and uh, it means that some uh, methods and structures which are known for these AN groups is not um, available in this class. But still, what is uh, um, make what makes them come? Uh, however, what makes it possible to work with them? It is that A is always one dimension. Mm. Okay? It is just that N is more complicated and the action of A on N. So for these spaces, there is a generalization of the previous author, Muller, and another co-author that still the same, exactly the same bound hold for the functions of the distinguished Laplacian. What can we uh, deduce from it? That probably, these estimates depend rather on the rank of on the dimension of A and not much on the dimension or, or on the structure of N. This is to verify in the future because there are still few results available. Uh, well, I am not really concentrating on this, but there is a uh, I am talking here all the time about LP to LP estimates, but there are lots of results on LP to LP prime with a P prime conjugate exponent. I just want to say that there is um, uh, there is a result of other authors for the same class of spaces, which are hard to deal with. So it does exist. Okay, but. Uh, if we remain into P to P and A N, then, so here it is still rank one case, and we would like to know what happens in the general rank. Mm. Uh, before going to known results, I would like to say a few words about um, where is uh, the difficulty, maybe. So in Iran, once again, the Fourier transform of uh, Psi of delta F is a multiplication of F hat by Psi of Xi square. Okay. Uh, and uh, it means that uh, the operator acts as convolution with a kernel. Well, multiplication, Fourier transform, it takes it into convolution. Yeah? And we can uh, calculate the kernel as the inverse Fourier transform of this function Psi, to Psi squared. Okay? This is all very um, their course, and uh, there are convergence, concerns, and so on. But still, if everything is good, then the kernel is given by this form. Uh, and um, on AN groups, uh, luckily, there is a similar transform available, which is called a spherical transform, uh, which uh, implies that we have uh, a formula for the kernel as an integral over uh, what is A? Uh, the abelian group A big has its uh, the algebra A small, which is uh, simply Rn, just Rl. It is by tradition we know it by L the dimension, and A star it is its dual space, 
but it is RL as well. So it is uh, integral over RL, uh, where we apply uh, our function psi to absolute value of psi squared. So it is exactly like in the classical case. Then instead of in imaginary exponentials, we have some functions phi psi, which uh, play a very comparable role. We, they are called spherical functions. They are positive definite, like those. They are coefficients of irreducible representations, but they are not characters of the group. They are bounded by one, for example. Uh, uh, and um, there are um, so the analog of this. And instead of integrating just by dxi, we have to introduce a special density. This density is given by uh, a function which holds the name of Harish Chandra C function, which appears in. Um, uh, in the detailed analysis of these phi psi, but uh, uh, I will not say anything else about it uh, apart from this. Just it is some function which gives this density the integral. Okay. And before the integral uh, as a whole, we have a factor uh, which is the modular function. So if you recall, there was the same factor in the connection between the kernel of delta and kernel of L. So if you remove the factor, we will get exactly the kernel of um, psi of L. Okay. So we have this um, integral in general and the question of uh, whether the kernel is in L1, for example, it is the question of estimated in syntax. So in principle, the work is very concrete. Um, but uh, so why it is complicated? Uh, phi xi is bounded by one. So in, from this point of view, it is good, but it is not sufficient for us because this factor delta is in principle growing exponentially. And if you want even to have boundedness on the group, then, uh, well, estimating phi just by one will not give a solution. Uh, there is, uh, there are some, th there is something better than that. We know that it is sufficient to consider only X in A being in the um, commutative subgroup. Okay, that in fact, there is a bound known for this product, the modular function times phi xi, it is bounded by a polynomial, but still it is not bounded. And so in general, so we have to uh, use other methods, but well, that's um, a first discussion of what happens here. And now let's look at the few available results for now. Uh, so now we are in a situation of A n groups with any dimension of A, uh, so in other words, uh, any rank. Mm. And uh, a result uh, which is known and uh, for any group of this kind, concerns uh, this quite special function. So we have we take the cosine which interests us. Uh, X is a positive real here. We take this cosine, but we multiply it not by, we divide it not by a polynomial, which would be what we would like to have, but by an exponential uh, with positive B. So it means that the localization is stronger than uh, needed for, for PDEs. But uh, it is, well, the first, um, uh, first uh, approximation. Uh, and, well, I would not explain what are 
all these, but I just uh, I'm just citing the result and to say that there are some constants s zero s infinity which depend on a group on the structure of the group and so on and so on. And the result is that the norm of uh, psi of delta on L1 is bounded. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case when uh, b is greater than 1, it is bounded by t over square root of b in power s0 in this one. Uh, and if b is smaller than 1, t is greater than 1, then it is bounded by another power, s infinity. In both cases, the power are polynomials, uh, the estimates are polynomial, and s infinity is always greater because it is maximum of s0 and uh, the dimension. Uh, and if we compare this to the case of ax plus b group, which is well known now, then we see that s0 is 1, and s infinity is n over 2. n plus 1, so n is the dimension of y's in this parameterization of x plus b group. And uh, the result of Miller and Taylor was that the L1 norm, the L1 norm grows as t yeah? uh, for any n. And uh, this result, which I'm citing now of Gadzinski, says that in one case, with strong localization by B, uh, it grows by as T as well. And if the localization is weaker, so B is small, then he obtains N over two power in T which is in fact uh, not optimal at all. Mm. Uh, so it means that in one case, uh, it cannot be improved, but in this case, uh, certainly uh, his proofs are not optimal. Okay. Uh, so we would like to go further and of course, not divide by exponential, but divide over a polynomial. Okay. Uh, if we write, um, uh, sorry. Yeah. Now I would like to uh, to cite another result of a similar kind, but for the Laplace Beltrami operator on the same groups. So the groups are the same, and if a function of this kind, uh, imaginary exponential divided over a power of psi, if we apply this to the plus Beltrami, then the formula of the kernel is very similar. We have the function here, uh, poly polynomial, exponential, spherical function, the density. But there is a Roar appearing everywhere because um, in the result which I'm citing, it is non shifted Laplace Beltrami. So the, 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 mm, well, uh, these spherical functions are eigenvectors with not with xi squared, by, but xi squared plus, plus a constant. What does it mean? It means also that uh, uh, the spectrum of this operator starts not at zero, but at rho squared, because the, we add constant rho squared. And it is maybe for this that in general, the behavior is better of this operator, but still. Uh, the, uh, there is a result which concerns pointwise estimates for this operator. So this kernel is bounded as is a decreasing power of t. So this is the comparison with the previous result that there the power of t was positive. And now for this operator, it is decreasing. But so um, 
intuitively, this should be due to this positive constant which they add to the operator. Okay, so decreasing power of t and this factor. Uh, this factor is a polynomial in x of the group times an exponential on the group. And um, well, I'm not maybe citing not quite exactly, but the interesting part of this estimate is for x such that um, here, such that exponential is negative. So it means that in fact, the modular function is small on them. So it is good, okay. But still in addition, we get a polynomial factor, which is big, mm. uh, which is not harmful for them, but which would become harmful if we divided over this uh, modular function to reduce the result to our operator. So more or less, I can say that uh, I would like to get rid of this polynomial factor here and show that uh, indeed, in reality, the kernel is just uh, constant times uh, modular function. Mm -hmm. But well, this is uh, what we are trying to do now. Uh, it is with a PhD student, Jipen Sun. I'm afraid that he will be late because I have told him, oh, he's here. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. I have to have given him the um, five p.m. time. Well, yeah, still, um, and uh, with him we are working on the distinguished Laplacian, which means that the kernel in question is uh, given by the formula which I have given to you, and it has this uh, modular function before the integral, and. Um, in fact, the aim is finally to estimate the oscillating integrals, but uh, for the moment we are working just on uniform norms, and it turns out that it should not really depend on uh, what uh, is psi, but uh, there should be just a con convergence of some integral. We <laughs> don't. We are not sure about the power yet. Well, there is a draft, but still, uh, it's not quite <clears throat> finished. Uh, uh, but we believe uh, that there is a very simple condition of convergence, which uh, gives that already the kernel would be bounded on the group. And well, when finished, the, our aim would be, of course, um, L1 estimate. Well, I think I would probably stop here because uh, the well, the introduction into uh, well, well, because I, I haven't finished uh, what I wanted to do about the introduction. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe still, I uh, at least I show this. Um, however. I was speaking, I was citing many times the functional rho. And to explain what is rho, one would need to explain what are roots. And um, uh, roots are just eigenvalues of uh, this Lie algebra A small, which is an analog of what we get as the diagonal algebra in the case of Jelen, when it acts on the nilpotent subalgebra n, which is uh, in the examples, uh, uh, the action of upper triangular matrices. So if you look at uh, this, you will see that um, uh, the action by hb minus bh, so we are in Lie case, uh, it is Lie bracket, so it is not um, just multiplication, but hb minus bh. Huh? And um, uh, in, uh, uh, on the matrix 
units corresponding to the places A, C, B, they, uh, the matrices like H act as multiplication by H2 minus H1, H3 minus H1, H3 minus H2, and so on. So uh, these matrix units are eigenvectors. And the expressions of the type H i minus H j are eigenvalues. Okay. And these expressions are linear in H, uh, linear functionals. Uh, in, so in this case, there are three of them. And these functionals are called roots. And uh, they have special properties, lots of special properties. And uh, rho is just the half sum of them. So in this case, um, um, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I didn't, uh, Look, look it up just before. I will, oh. <laughs> um, okay. I would li not like to to say. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, so this is how it appears. Uh, the algebra n is decomposed into a direct sum of eigenspaces. So as you he see here. It is the sum of uh, the linear spans of the three matrix units. And it is a general case. In the simple simple case, these uh, subspaces are always one dimensional. Uh, and um, well, and these roots appear also uh, in the uh, uh, in properties of spherical functions and mm -hmm. uh, and of everything which we have uh, in the analysis here. In addition, I would say that they appear also in the estimates. And so it happens that uh, when, say, uh, in, uh, in the uh, parts of the group where the roots are far from zero. There are lots of estimates which go easily, but uh, when they are close to zero or equal, then you need more attention and some uh, methods do not work and you have to find a way around it. So, yeah. Okay, maybe I'll stop here. Thank you. Yeah. So, thank you very much. What about questions? Um, I have a question um, concerning the Laplace uh, Laplacian over Lie group, but from LP to LQ. Do you have some boundedness result there, or oh. it's always born? Uh, uh, no, 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 not always. Of course, not always. And it, if I didn't speak about that, it is because I would need as much time to give a complete picture of that. Um, there are many results, maybe most, on the case where you map from LP to the conjugate exponent, P prime. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and for this, in fact, it is often done also by interpolation because when you get a result from L1 to L infinity. Uh, it is one case. Uh, then from L2 to L2, it is always possible. And then you interpolate. Mm -hmm. I see. But anyway, the, the structure of the group again affects by somehow, right? Sure. It should sure. affect. For example, on the uh, on AN groups for Laplace Beltrami, uh, the uh, bounds are with exponential decay. So it is much better than on Rn. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. Okay. 
But when you um, speak of uh, this distinguished Laplacian, then, for example, from L1 to L infinity, you get a constant which does not need gr neither grow nor decrease with T. Oh, okay. Uh, and it is worse than in Rn. I see, yes. Okay. And so under, oh, yeah, yes. I understand what happened here. Okay. Other questions? And oh. one more question. So concerning your functions, eventually you wanted to introduce the function with compact support by multiplying, getting getting them, making them bounded, is it? But in your latest result, I guess that wasn't compact support. Am I right or something missed there? You multiply by exponential, as I guess, right? But not a compact support. Compact support is just uh, a method used by certain authors. Uh, they prove something for compact support and then they uh, use uh, a decomposition similar to uh, Littlewood Pelly and to get uh, the complete result. But it depends, it's just a method of the proof. It's not a, see, it's not a real limitation on the result. So I think there are no, I don't see results which are valid for compact support and not valid otherwise. Ah, I see, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. the, okay yes, the conditions mm -hmm. are rather of the form boundedness when multiplied by a polynomial, usually of this kind. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yes, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so other questions, comments? Well, if not, uh, let us thank Yulia Nikolaevna for a very interesting and, uh, as always, very uh, well-presented talk. And uh, we hope to see you <laughs> not last time in our seminar. Thank you. Okay. Okay, especially how quickly uh, she uh, could begin uh, because of that uh, log jet or how do they call it difference in times. So it is. Thank you. Uh, it is because I planned to use this hour to uh, to extend a little bit my talk. So it will, I was at the computer. <laughs> ah yes yes. <laughs> but well, I well, lucky, but uh, nevertheless so we. Oh, we are very much impressed. No, so uh, thank to all uh, the speaker, uh, all people who attended. I think they had a very good time. And next time, next week, it will be Viktor Semyonovich Schulman, which is also, um, we expect, very interesting talk. Well, and now uh, let's, uh, we shall meet again next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.